Hello everyone. You're watching scardia.com and I am Dr. Amath Haider. Today our topic is cervical spondylosis. This is the brief outline of our lecture today. We'll be discussing the signs, the symptoms of the cervical spondylosis, what it is, its pathophysiology, along with its the radiculopathic symptoms, how they develop different areas and what is actually its treatment. Now, we'll, as I told you, we'll be discussing the detail the cervical spondylosis, what it is, what are the signs and symptoms of the cervical spondylosis, and how the patient would actually come to you when the patient is having these sorts of problems. After that, we'll be moving on to the details of the cervical spondylosis in our lecture and what is actually what is causing the main, what is actually the root cause of the problem, which one of them is this prolapse, other is the bony spurs. From then onwards, we're moving on to the signs and symptoms of what is actually uh, how the patient presents to you when he or she actually comes with a problem of neck pain and uh, the overlapping symptoms of cervical spondylosis, radiculopathy and the myelopathy. And we were discussing in this uh, video that how to actually diagnose from the history as well as the examination that whether this patient is having spondylosis, radiculopathy or myelopathy. From then onwards, we're moving on to the different aspects of the radiculopathy with, with uh, what are the signs and symptoms if the different nerve roots of the uh, which are involved, which may be causing the radiculopathy. At different levels, we'll be discussing each level separately with along with their dermatomal distributions as well as the muscles which are involved along with the reflexes which may be present as well. Then, as with any disease, you have once you've done the history and examination, you have to go for X-rays. We'll be discussing in the details what to look for on X-rays, how to interpret X-rays, and what are the different changes which actually happen when the view and cervical spine X-ray AP and the lateral view. From then onwards, with every disease, once you've diagnosed it, get the X-rays and MRI done, then there are always differential diagnosis. We will be briefly discussing what are the differential diagnoses in shoulder, what are differential diagnoses in the in peripheral nerve neuropathy, as well as what are the could, other could be problems as well, which may present with the similar kind of symptoms like of the radiculopathy and myelopathy as well. And then lastly, we'll be moving on towards the treatment. As with any disease the treatment always starts usually with the conservative management and we'll be briefly discussing what is the role of analgesics and different drugs and physiotherapy and if all this fails then we'll be going on towards the operative treatment as well and we'll be briefly discussing the options which may be in form of a anterior approach as well like ACDF or there may be something to, which can be done posteriorly in form of for a monotomy or there could be the uh, replacements which has actually a newer modality of the treatment which has come up in form of the intervertebral disc replacements. We will be briefly discussing the pros and cons of each treatment and why we need to move in this direction, why we need to go from anterior approach, do something or why we need to only something from posteriorly as well. We will be briefly discussing the role of laminectomy and laminoplasty which has actually a definitive role in the treatment of cervical myelopathy as well as the radiculopathy as well. Now, if you want to uh, watch this whole video, go to scardia.com and watch this whole video now. And you can start your free trial just today. And that's absolutely free. You can watch tons of videos and there is more than thousands of videos which are available there. You can go there and watch them. Thank you very much.